It's the Titterpigs. And now it's time for Titterpigs, the RPG podcast. So am I getting paid for this? Everybody, uh, welcome to our interview with Alex Gillot and Ian Christensen of Critical Hit Publishing. Uh, Scott and I are going to be interviewing them and talking about uh, their uh, product line, their games, their Call of Cthulhu masterpieces. So, their, and their their history. You know, we want to know you know their their background. You know, where where did your grandparents meet? Where did your parents meet? Um, yeah, you know, when we're, did we're you guys go... first come to the States or Ireland or whatever foreign country you exist in? Because because Alex and Ian, this is never mind. No, stupid. <laughs> no, no, that's um, a different show. <laughs> so so yeah, why don't we why don't we start with then just you know uh one after the other, just so people can kind of spot your voice. Uh uh Alex. Yes. Hello. Hi. Okay. Yeah. And Ian. Hello. Okay. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Um, you know, we, we obviously no, we know each other. <laughs> we, we know each other really, you know, not really well, but we know each other relatively well. We've been hanging out and chatting, you know, online for you know a good year now, it seems. And, um, you know, we've myself, I've, you know, run a couple of your games. I know Keith has, is, is involved with that and oh, yes. maybe run, run a couple yourself. We've done some play tests for you guys. So, you know, we we and continue to do so because we really enjoy your game. So uh, I just want to start by Thank thanking you. you both for taking the time, especially, uh, you know, both Alex and Ian, because I know it's kind of getting a little late in the evening over there. It's still daytime here in California. So that's right. What, I, I'm a creature of the night. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I know that the, the one night where I think we were playtesting Carnival of Madness, it was running to be about 3 a.m. or something. I'm like, is it getting late for you? No, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> um, I think that's Ian's standard answer to that question right. every time. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to go ahead. We got some questions for you. And uh, but why don't we start with just a little bit of background from from both you guys. So mm-hmm. um, Ian. Uh, I know this is kind of sure. a standard podcast question, but why don't we start with what was I'm your I'm a standard podcast kind of guy. What's that? I'm a standard podcast kind of guy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So if, if we get a little tropey, let me know. Uh, so no. what what was your, your introduction, uh, your general introduction to gaming, um, you know, as, as far as you can remember? <sighs> Pretty much as early as I have memories. So around like maybe three years old, mm-hmm. my parents already had a regular weekend gaming group. Um, in our house in I'm jealous. Bowling Green, Ohio, uh, where I was kind of born and raised initially. Um, yeah, so I used to sit up on the porch, or not on the porch, sorry, sit up on the steps at night and just listen to them playing their games and having a great time, telling these stories, laughing, joking. You know, they were probably smoking some reefer and stuff too, but I was too young to understand any of that. I just knew, hey, mom and dad, they have this game group every Friday night they play. And uh, I really wanted to be part of it, but of course I was like three years old and I couldn't. So when I was four, uh, my father finally sat down and uh, ran a little kind of a one-shot scenario. We didn't call them one-shots back in 1981, but you know, he ran a little one-shot scenario for me. I got to pick out a pewter mini and then he took this big Chinese rubber dragon toy that I had and used that as the monster. And uh, yeah, so I killed my first dragon. I'm sure, I'm sure he let me win. But I killed my first dragon when I was four years old, and uh, it was AD and D, and I've been hooked pretty much ever since. Four years later, I started running games for my little brother. So, I, I don't know. I got to say that's badass. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna put it out there. That's badass. Yeah, a lot, lot, I, lot I, of- owe, I, I owe it all to my parents. Really, they got me into. They were my first two good dungeon masters. So, I mean, a, a lot of us, at least from you know within our general generate generation, you know, points don't really have that aspect of my dad or my mom or my, my parents got me into gaming. That's kind of 
more, you know, kids later on, uh, especially, well, especially now, you know, this, this yeah, day, it sure. seems like every parent is trying to either introduce their kids to D and D or gaming or, you know, or their kids are asking them about it and their parents are, are haven't tried it for a while, but they're they, you know, no problem getting into it. So that that's excellent. That's, that's excellent. Your, your, your parents are, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the few, the proud, the many, and, you know, well, and, you know, good people I, for at least from from getting you into the games so yeah i, I was lucky because that was the height of the well actually break the early days of the satanic panic and all that too yeah. so oh, well, yeah. um my parents didn't buy into any of that shit thankfully well, that's so. good <laughs> yeah. um so what about you alex uh what was your what was what was your introduction to gaming and then you know what was what was you know how old were See, you I, I, I started what was in <laughs> yeah I, I started back in uh late 70s with the uh, the red box uh, edition of D and D, before the advanced came along, oh. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> my, my my I I, I ran uh, keep on the Borderlands for for a friend of mine, and that 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 was sort of how we started playing on the uh, on the on the living room floor on the big shag rug, <laughs> you know, uh, having to color in the dice with the uh, the provided crayon they give you. I miss and, that. Uh, yeah, that was that was something. My first character sheet though was was on an old uh, mechanical typewriter. Like I had this big old mechanical typewriter that was my like my grandfather's or something like that. And so that that's how I would that's how I made my first character sheets was 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 typing in that. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean all through like junior high school and high school and on up, I had a regular gaming group, and uh, <clears throat> we 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 played several several D and D campaigns. And then occasionally to sort of, you know, cleanse the palate would occasionally play like Boot Hill. Um, uh, what was it? Uh, Game of World. Um, Top Secret. There was one other one I'm trying to think of. I don't remember what it is at the top of my well, head. Star Frontiers. No, Navy, no, it was, it was, uh, I, th- I think those, those, those were the, those were really the big ones. Yeah. That's but, some classics uh, but, but, there though. Yeah. But D&D was always our, our, our other one. And then uh, I got into more, horror stuff later on when uh because i was always a big fan of of hp lovecraft and and uh you know uh poe and, and all these others but for, just to give you a context my uh my mother at night would read me uh these ghost stories from this book um was it alfred hitchcock i think it was uh he had this co- these collections of ghost stories and those were my bedtime stories so um it may explain it may explain quite a bit Wow, that's very enlightening. <laughs> so yeah. you, you 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 both you both seem to have you know at, at least you know from the beginning your your parents will, or were definitely more cooler than mine. Uh, I'm not sure about keys, but uh, <laughs> way more cooler than mine. Yes. Um, well, well, my mother was my mother noted my mother noticed when the Satanic Panic came along like later because mm-hmm. I, I was I started before that, but when that came along, and she wasn't so much concerned that I would you know become a Satanist um, as she was that. Uh, that that the self righteous people might think I was a Satanist and and attack me, so it was, it was that was more her concern that you know like you know just watch out for the crazy people like yeah All wow right. okay I, I I think that's that to be to be fair that's probably one of the better parenting advice out there you, you yeah can, man. You no pun intended watch out for the crazy people <laughs> right <TM. laughs> um so yeah excellent so you you, you it sounds like both of you kind of fall into not i'm not going to say generic but a lot of people's introduction at least at a certain point was D D or a D um okay. and then of course rolling into that uh, is it safe to assume your first introduction into the more horror gaming aspect of it was call of cthulhu no no, no ian what was your introduction then <laughs> i had a very late introduction to call of cthulhu i knew about it since the 80s mm-hmm. um the late 80s anyway um but I didn't know anybody that played it where I grew up and nobody was interested in it. Um, so my introduction to horror role-playing, if you can call it that, I guess, was probably Vampire the Masquerade in the uh, early 90s, I think it was. Yeah, early to mid-90s. I think most of us um, have done a stint in Vampire. <laughs> yeah, and um, I wasn't into it. Didn't really care that much. Uh, I think it was mostly just because of the people that I was playing it with at the time, you know, had very limited selection in Northwest Ohio uh, to choose from. 
but uh, I didn't really get into the masquerade that much. I liked the dark ages more. It was a little bit more, it was a little darker, a little bit more grim, I think in a lot of ways. Um, and I really liked Wraith the Oblivion. I read that book. I bought that book, wanted to play it. I, I think I ran one session of it, but just nobody wanted to play. So again, a lot of my horror role-playing came from just repeated disappointment and uh, not being able to get a, a horror game going until, um, let's see, I think it was around 2002, the last Gen Con that was in Milwaukee. Um, when I went there with a mate and, uh, Oh, we pl I played as many horror games as I could find. And one of them was D20 Call of Cthulhu, which was pretty new at that time by Monty Cook. Um, and so once I had the D20 Call of Cthulhu book, I, I managed to find a few people that would play it, you know, and, and we played a little bit of that then. Uh, we played games Some like Sorcerer and stuff of that sort too. But um, yeah, and then uh, what was that? That was in 2002. So it wasn't until 2013 or 14 when I finally got to play traditional brp call of cthulhu okay so what, eight eight years ago maybe yeah interesting <laughs> wow yeah. that's and that's... now it's my it's, it's my favorite role-playing game now, so and and so so yeah so i mean so that's that's interesting i i, I a lot of people their introduction at, at a certain certain point in time was vampire you know even, even that for a lot of people of that particular period that was their introduction to role-playing games <laughs> um but, uh, you know, as far as those who weren't playing before that, this is kind of it, it, it did what it did. It opened it up to a lot of a lot of other people to get involved in that. It, it fed a certain uh, need, scratch a certain scratch. So but um, so, Ian, I saw you shaking or Alex, I saw you shaking your head also. So you uh, call it Cthulhu wasn't necessarily your introduction either. No, no. It, well, uh, I had I'd heard about it, uh, you know, uh, you know, around when it came out, but. It, it, it seemed heavily, you know, well, it was heavily set in the 1920s, which just really wasn't, you know, where I was wanted to play. Like I, I grew up sitting in front of the television watching Cool Shack the Night Stalker. And uh, before that, I watched uh, Dark, uh, was it uh, Dark Shadows yeah. with Barnabas Collins, the vampire. It was like a very, if, for, for, for all you kids who don't know about it, it, it was this, basically this uh, vampire soap opera. And uh, it, it was, you know, probably cheesy by today's standards, but it was, you know, a lot of that was sort of introduction to horror as well. But I, but I loved Kolshak the Night Stock, and that was that was like my favorite thing ever. And so I wanted to play something that was set more in modern times. And so what I ended up using, uh, Palladium, I think, came out with something called what was it Beyond the Supernatural? I think yep. it was called. Yep. And um, but I, did, I didn't like the system, so I ended up like you know, using, using D and D to try and, you know, play with the, with palladium, uh, you know, with, with, with that setting, you know, so I kind of cobbled together my own, um, my, my own horror game, nice. you know, using that, um, in a way it worked out. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm sure by game design standards, it was a hot mess, but <laughs> we enjoyed <laughs> playing it. So that, that was, that was fine. Um, I, uh, I inadvertently started playing, uh, basic role playing through, uh, fast as Star Trek, which I played later on, which basically is almost identical system. They just, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, almost, uh, it, it's almost the same as if they don't use, they use psionics instead of sanity or something like that. They have a few different things, but that's where I sort of picked up on that. Um, I really like the skill-based system versus, you know, what I'd known before, which was the, the level-based system. So it was kind of nice to, to see this other way of doing things. And, uh, but yeah, and, and I think I think at one point I might have converted that over into, you know, some kind of horror game. Uh, and again, because I wasn't really interested in the 1920s era, so um, it, 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 of course I, I of course I did play once. Um, uh, chaos, once they came out with the uh, Call of Cthulhu. Modern? Now I think it was called. Oh, now yeah, I think it was called, called, called modern now. version or Cthulhu yeah. Now or something yeah, like that. Cthulhu yeah. Now, which should, yeah. should have been called Cthulhu Nineties <laughs> nowadays, I suppose. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Then, yeah. Now, now is then, and then is now. Yeah, yeah something like um, that. one of one of the most unfortunate titles in the entire Chaos Online, in my opinion. Yeah, Cthulhu Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was very forward thinking, right? It was. It was. It was one might almost say pessimistic. Well, I mean, what it could it can like, no, no one's going to be playing this in ten years. It could definitely go into Cthulhu Now. Now. How about now? Now, now. And just, now, just, now, 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 <laughs> now, 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 Yeah, just the whole How about now? now Cthulhu? 
<laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, so that, speaking that's, that's, of now, yeah. Cthulhu, mm -hmm. so you guys are a writing team. So, and that's why we have you guys here for this interview. So with, with your foundation kind of set now, you guys have uh, some good horror foundation there, right? Uh, great bedtime stories <laughs> from, um, you know, Hitchcock and then, you know, Vampire the Masquerade and, you know, the Dark Ages and... Uh, Got to give a shout out to all those old, uh, like, like 1970s, 1980s horror comics too. I, I, I was really into those as a kid. Oh yeah. I, I, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. I'm sure all, all those different things have, have built, you know, have, have added to that foundation on which you guys are currently, you know, that feed into your current writing. So uh, as a writing team, how did you guys actually like <laughs> come together? Cause Ian, I know you are overseas and <laughs> Alex, you're here in the U S uh, I oh, yeah. mean, obviously the world is small with the digital, the digital age, but how did you guys <laughs> actually come together as a writing team and to write like Call of Cthulhu scenarios? I was just going to say geographically, I think I'm closer to Alex than you are to Scott. Geographically, <laughs> you are probably correct. Very true. That, that's, I mean, geographically, nobody's that's close true. to me, you know, so. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm closer yeah, we, to we, Alex. We, we've never met, we've never met in person. No, we never met in person. Nope. Yeah, no, no, never met okay. in person. Um, I think I think we just got. I think we just met through through games we were playing. Uh, just, yeah, through uh, like the RPG Brigade or the the OSG, one of those groups. That, yeah, um, yeah, and 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 we just started occasionally playing together. Um, and uh, uh, I'm trying to think how, how did how did we get involved in writing together? Because I, I was already doing stuff was, on on drive through. So um, Alex and DBJ and uh, Rob Davis released the pipeline. Uh, what three years ago? Yeah, yeah, it must have been maybe now. almost yeah. four, three or four years ago. Um, they released the pipeline. Anyway, it was their the, <clears throat> the critical hit critical hit publishing's first dive into scenario writing for Call of Cthulhu. Um, and I, I can't remember how, I think you sent me a copy, Alex, because we would, we'd game together. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Cause you had been, you had been I, running. I did a, I did a lot online, of, uh, yeah. I did a lot of YouTube stuff at the time, like actual mm -hmm. play stuff. And so Alex, I think sent me a, a copy, a free copy. He's like, here, I want you to check this out. Just let me know what you think of it. And I loved it and I ran it and I really loved it. Um, but as just the way my, my crazy brain works, as I was reading it, I kept finding little, little little errors and things that, 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 um, you know, just kind of, I was like, well, this, this doesn't work. You know, there's no rule for that. It doesn't exist in Call of Cthulhu. You know, it was their first time writing for Call of Cthulhu. Right. So I, I just sent back to Alex. I said, Hey, uh, I really like the adventure. I'm going to run it. I'm going to put it up on my YouTube channel and stuff. And, uh, but here's a, I think I sent him a copy uh, like of the document, you know, here's the yeah. 80 some page document with, uh, and I think I made like 120 little minor corrections here or there things so like little rules and consistencies and stuff like that. And uh, a fan edit, I would call it, you know, right. like a, not, not, not that I was a fan of it. I was <laughs> yeah. a fan of it. And I, and I said, Hey, here's a few things, you know, like you can do with it what you want, but you know, like I just thought it might, might improve your book overall. Um, and so then I, I guess he liked it. Because uh, mm -hmm. it made you know he made the edits and and then he actually asked me he said hey do you want to work on the next one with me and I said sure why not you know I've always wanted to kind of get into writing for Call of Cthulhu I've I've never published mind you but I've written tons of stuff for OSR games you know what I mean like writing mm -hmm. my own adventures and scenarios and campaigns creating worlds all that stuff mm -hmm. but I was always scared. I guess not, maybe not scared, but intimidated by Call of Cthulhu because I didn't know how to set up like an investigation and stuff like that. It was a totally different style of gaming. Yeah. So I just took the plunge since uh, Alex invited me over and I knew he, he could do it cause he'd already done it. I said, yeah, I'll jump in and we'll see how we get on and see what I can, I can learn and what we can create together. So your, fan, the blood was born. So your fan edits yeah. were the catalyst for um, what would later become highway of blood. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was that was that was, well, that was the project. They, that we they were on they had us was working together. I think we, we then we came up with the yeah. idea for Highway of okay. Blood based okay. on our, yeah, our mutual yeah, yeah. love of that of of grindhouse horror and um mm -hmm. the, those those Mo old muscle 70s, cars. Uh, and, yeah, yeah. So, so so the lesson that I hear is kids, um, don't be afraid to send unsolicited fan edits to the people you like because you never know what may happen. Um, oh, so, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. And I mean, and that's, I'd say that kind of tongue in cheek as a joke, but, uh, 
you know, as, as soon as I, as, as soon as I say that I can hear several people go, no, <laughs> no. I, 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 like, no, yes, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's good advice in general. Like not just when it comes to, you know, writing for RPGs or something, but I mean, if you, if you're into something, you like something that somebody does, yeah. you know, reach out to them, tell them, tell them why you like it. Um, yeah. Even if they don't get back, at least, you know, um, you've put it out there. Mm-hmm. You've got nothing to lose yeah. by approaching somebody. Like at the end of the day, we, we all tend to put people on a pedestal that we look up to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whether it be another writer or whether it's a film director or a movie actor or a politician, whatever it is, we all have different people that we admire. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times I think people are just afraid to, to reach out and, and try to try to talk to those people. Cause they're like, Oh, well, that person's above me or that person's, you know, mm-hmm. makes a lot more money. They're very successful. I mean, at the end of the day, they're, they're just people. And I, and I am none of those things, by the way. So <laughs> well, just to be know. clear. Well, it, it, <laughs> And, and I think a little I, bit of I'm uh, famous, no rich, nor, nor, nor uh, a, a nor little generous. bit of advice is don't start your first <laughs> solicitation of their work as okay. This kind of sucks, but I have found listen, listen, 300... listen, dumbass. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> no, no, I that's where you, reviewers I, come in like me. <laughs> I was really stunned halfway through writing Highway of Blood when I found out Alex is not actually a 21 year old Japanese cosplayer. <laughs> um, you know, I yeah, like, that, I thought your name, I thought your name was Momoko. Like, what the that, fuck that, is this that's, how, that's how you, that's how you reel them in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh, so too funny. So is that what led <clears throat> into your first venture was carnival of, or not carnival of madness, my mistake, uh, highway of blood. That, that was well, the, the, your, well, your first, our first collaboration. Effort. Yeah, yeah, that was our first collaboration. Okay. But to go back a little bit, I wanted like I, I first started with 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 drive through doing D and D stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, because it was it was you know it was easy enough to do, and uh, I, I had never really thought of doing anything with Call of Cthulhu because I thought it's like oh I have to submit the Chaosium, and you know they 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 get a, they probably they probably get a million things coming in all the time, and it wasn't until they started the Miskatonic repository thing, or at least I found out about it, that I realized that was an actual possibility. And so um, I was originally going to write the, the pipeline as a, um, as a center at the back of a book about using cinematic environs in Call of Cthulhu. Okay. So it was going to be Arctic, you know, using Arctic environs in, in, a, in a Call of Cthulhu setting. And then I was going to throw in this little scenario at the back, just as kind of a, a fun little extra, right? And then uh, I kept, I started writing on it and I had run it as a one shot, like months and months before for, for a couple of, for a couple of guys that uh, uh, just for fun. And I thought, well, I already have partly written, so I'll, I'll write it up. And I started writing and writing. And next thing you know, the, 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 the pipeline was, was about three times the size of the original book. <laughs> so it, it ended up flipping around and, and, and that, so that, that became the main thing. Um, but it has since been updated, by the way, to, to like 2.0 between, um, you know, obviously the, the, the things that Ian spotted and then, uh, some other people ran it and they, they did some, they made some changes of their own, just, you know, uh, keeper changes that every keeper makes that were better than what I thought of. So I talked to them and said, Hey, do you mind if I, do you mind if I change that in, in mine and, you know, give me credit for it? It's like, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So I. I, 2.0 is, is is somewhat different than than the original now so that was fun god i need to break out my <laughs> copy of 2.0 and actually like read it and then run it <laughs> <laughs> i've got it it's in print i just haven't read it yet. well he, he did you know uh, it, it was it was actually from into the darkness they ran it and uh um he did he, he made like one little change that i i was at first i was so angry because i didn't think of it and it would it just made it so much better I won't spoil anything here, but it, it just made, it just made things. It just made the scenarios flow so much better. I was like, "Son of a bitch!" <laughs> like, like, uh. that was uh, Tom Rayleigh, yeah, yeah, into the darkness. Yeah, yeah. yeah those things happen, though. Those things happen. <laughs> um. So, switching gears a little bit, um, let's let's talk about so. We've talked, uh, you know, we've touched on the pipeline, right? We've hinted at um, Highway of Blood, but let's let's talk about your newest game. Yes, uh, that just released. Uh, I'm looking at my my data, my computer monitor here. What, twelve days ago? Yeah. Uh, Carnival of Madness. Uh, what 
what is so for listeners what is carnival of madness this is a multi-part question so what is carnival of madness what was your inspiration for for the scenario and what do you think is its strongest selling point um well okay uh, did you how spoilery do you want us to get because, uh, let, let's uh, try to keep it as spoiler free as we can okay right. um because obviously we want um i want listeners to to walk away from this with a with an idea that hey carnival of madness is something that they're interested in and then they should seek it out gotcha. right. but without okay. spoiling it for them <laughs> so I, I suppose for me the 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 what really sparked carnival of madness was my desire to make a genuine one shot um, because after writing uh, how we have blood, which came out, which came into this, you know, multi shot, you know, epic, <laughs> you know, Sandbox. descent into hell. Um, yeah. Oh, we know, it, you know we I, played it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Um, it, it, it just, it got out of control. So I, I really wanted to limit it. So I, I was thinking, okay, I want to have it limited in scale. So it's going to be one location. I want it limited in time it takes place in one night. And, um, you know, I wanted to have, a, you know, a, 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 a specific sort of end point to it. And, and so those things sort of gave rise to the idea, okay, so it'll be a carnival. Uh, because carnivals are always, you know, moody and and atmospheric for these sort of things, um, <clears throat> and uh, what else? Um, I'm trying to edit myself so I don't spoil anything. Um, I don't think I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say it involves a missing girl uh, who was, uh, um, you know, kidnapped from a from a nearby hospital. Um, I think the other thing that influenced me with you know, sort of trying to, with that idea was that I grew up in, in central Massachusetts. And so that's, I know that area really well. I grew up there. I, I grew up in, I grew up in Worcester and this takes I'm place. Sorry. You know, <laughs> uh, it was, it was nice back then. Uh, <clears throat> it takes place, you know, West of there in, in the, in the fictional town of, of Aylesbury. Uh, but it, uh, you know, there was always something magical about Halloween in new England. And I just, I love that time period that, uh, uh, that feel the smells. It's just, it's mm. very visceral to me. Yeah. Fall, fall on the East coast in that area is, you know, it, it's a, a legit change. It's, it's the whole world changes, <laughs> at least in that yeah. area. We don't experience it out here in California with our uh, two seasons, uh, summer and summerer. Um, so we, we, what we know about <laughs> you it, you must live is, in South Carolina too, <laughs> <laughs> but, but seeing, but seeing that in, in witnessing and being back, I've got family back there and been, been there during the fall. It is like a totally different world. It's, it's more yeah. than, you know, a, a, a painting or an image on TV. So it's just, like you said, the smells, the, the air. And with that, it does <clears> give <throat> off this weird kind of real life creepy environment you know as the sun tends to set and the shadow set in and the different colors it, it's it's no it, it, i would say it's it's definitely something that i could see inspiring this kind of thing it just adds to the atmosphere and then you throw in a creepy carnival i mean you oh know, my god yeah yeah you, you've that, got like, new, england, new england itself is just steeped in ghost stories and lore yeah. Right. And and I mean, there's a reason Stephen King writes so much in about Maine, and and why Lovecraft wrote so much about New England and Massachusetts. And um, there's something about the place that just gives rise to ghost stories and oh, yeah. and, and scary stories. Oh, I concur. Um, just just like Alex, I I grew up uh, probably about thirty or forty miles west of where he grew up, so in Massachusetts mm. myself. So um, I get it. There there is something. I'm not going to say magical about Massachusetts in the fall because magical is not the right word, but like eerily yeah. skin crawling, creepy. Because um, <laughs> I, I mean, I know Alex can can probably attest to this. I mean, like once the and, and maybe Scott, because I know you've been there, too. Like once that sun starts to set, you know, at five or five thirty in October, you know, September, October, November, you know, the 
like the the leaves that are you know changing color and dropping off the trees they have mm -hmm. a distinct smell that you don't get in other places no. yeah. and um it's a and, very and they, just blow, they blow in swirls across the street right. and yeah. and you get that first smell of wood smoke as people start lighting yes. fireplaces and wood yeah. stoves and yeah. and and uh one thing i worked into this that was always distinct for me was when you uh, in, especially in the older cars when you first turn on that heater of your car for the first time in the fall after not having used it all summer it that too has a distinctive smell to it's the it. burning of the dust off the coil yeah, oh yeah of course it is mm -hmm. but it's it's still just that unique smell that you know yeah and, it, and of course you know you have apple orchards you have uh uh cider and and pies and it's just that 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 so much so much of that is is just burned into mm -hmm. me and listeners that concludes southie talk with Alex and Keith as they discuss <laughs> what Southie's like. a whole nother area, guys. And, and oh, yeah, that's that, that, as they grow up. <laughs> that that's a whole nother part of New England. We're not going to talk about Southie. Um, uh, so wow. Okay. So yes, that is a little <laughs> cultural uh peering through the window of where Alex and, and Keith yes. grew up. But <laughs> um now as somebody that's intimately familiar with Carnival of Madness myself, um uh because I've I've worked on the project too. Yes. Uh, so I, 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 I'm I trying to retain, keep out the job. spoilers too. Mm -hmm. um, do you, Ian, do you think that there is, uh, as, as a total, as I smack my mic around here, as a total package, do you think that it really, for you as somebody that's not a New Englander, right? So mm -hmm. somebody kind of looking in from the outside as, as a contributor to the project as well, that, that it really does for you embody kind of that, that creepy new England feel the, the, the creepy carnival jive, you know, feel. Um, like I can't comment on the creepy new England feel. Cause I'm trying to think what, what I've ever been in new England. I've been to Pennsylvania and I've been to Delaware. That's New England. That's right? close enough. I mean, that's about you get it. A bit of that there, yeah. <laughs> that's about you get it. Some there. Um, yeah. That's about it for. Oh, I've been to New York too, but uh, upstate. But I'm sorry. Um, no, actually, I would say upstate New York is probably uh, one of the most beautiful places I've oh, ever oh, been. Oh God, in it's gorgeous. That's probably the closest. Yeah. Amazing. But Finger Lakes. But do you think amazing. it really for you, um, as as somebody that's obviously intimately familiar with the project? But yeah, like as far as the creepy carnival vibe goes, for sure. I I, I think. Uh, we, we put a lot of time. We, we, we spent more time, I think, overall. Now, granted, we went through all the, the madness of 2020 and 2021, of course. But uh, <laughs> we, we spent a lot more time working on Carnival, I think, than we did on Highway. It felt like, oh, yeah. Time. Anyway, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. But um, and I think that kind of shows it paid off. Um, you know, we talked, we had many sessions where we just sit together and talk about what we remembered from going to carnivals in the seventies and eighties, you know, like what kind of games there were, what kind of food there was and things of that sort. So, um, you know, we we focused a lot on those details and in fairness, I, you know, based on what I've seen with the exception of like Narragansett, it seems like the carnivals in new England have pretty much the same stuff that the carnivals in Ohio, where I grew up had, you know, um, so <laughs> I would imagine there's probably a lot of commonality across the country on that because yeah. they travel. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. And of course, there's also the fact that the carnival in Carnival of Madness is not a New England carnival, it's a European carnival that happens to oh. travel, right? Indeed, and, uh, it is. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think it worked really well. There's another thing I'd point out too is like, you know, from experience that highway of blood is very much kind of a a a, a visceral physical grinder right um, right you will take damage most likely mm -hmm. a lot of damage <laughs> um we want to be a tagline carnival you will take damage yeah. oh, there man. you go right jeez opportunity um, missed with carnival though we wanted to do that but not to the body but to the mind you know that was a, that was one of our early goals yeah you know where if you want to call um highway a meat grinder then carnival's a sanity grinder so got it um, okay and uh and i can tell you having run it i think i just ran my 13th run through of it this mm -hmm. weekend um yeah there's lots of insanity to go around <laughs> yeah i saw that posting yes i think that you, you guys definitely are running <laughs> running uh world records for sanity loss um I did and, see and, that. That's fantastic. And, and to be fair, as someone who's who's you know been through it, 
it's not bloated at all. I mean, you know, some people are going to go, oh, come on. You know, they're just saying that. No, it's it's not forced. It's definitely not, you know, bloated. The possibility of it is is there. So it's, mm. it's definitely it's definitely a game to, you know, where you're right. You know, whereas Highway of Blood was more, you know, good Lord, these hit points are going down quickly. And, you know, sanity was part of it in in uh you know carnival of madness of the, the the mental aspects are, are mm. the, the key key thing there and and oh, as you absolutely. said it's nice and i mean i hope i'm not taking over too much but the it's it's you had mentioned earlier when i've spoken with one of you it's either ian or alex your one of your things was is you wanted to tighten it up you know make it something that someone could play within a session or a relatively decent mm. session uh, yeah. Whereas, you know, Highway of Blood, it, it being a sandbox, it can go all over and as long as you want. Do, do you think that do you feel like you've accomplished that in 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 um, uh, in Carnival of Madness? I definitely so far, I think, for, yeah. For I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we 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 I think even in the play test, we always manage to to do it in a single session. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, some of longer sessions, like I think one went to like five hours or five and a half, maybe or something like that, which is a little bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but then but then uh, I did we ended up doing a a major cut to it, which again I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, there there was there was one, there was one one piece in it that was very cool. I really enjoyed it, but it ended up it, it tended to bog down the characters and it kind of took them away from sort of the main story. Yeah. And, and as cool as it was, and that was one of the hardest things on this one. And, and I guess, I guess it shows growth of a kind as a, as a, as a, as a scenario writer that decided to just, you know, we decided to just cut it out, amputate it. And, and it was, it, it ended up being so much better for it, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. To, to, to make, to make it tighter, to make it, definitely finish you know completable in a single session and mm-hmm. to not take away from you know the main sort of um the main sort of thread awesome. now somebody awesome. wanted to run a multi-session um you know run of it of course it, it's it's definitely you're able to you know you can stretch out that night over oh yeah eight hours of play probably if you wanted to go and play all the games and Experience well, that's it. If, if you carnival. get role players, yeah. If you, if you get some hardcore role players who just love to interact and 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 really play with you know play with their characters, and then they want to play every single game, and they want to go on every ride and sample every bit of food, you can definitely, you know, you can definitely drag sure. it out a bit. But I, I, even then, I think it would be hard to drag it out more than two mm-hmm. uh, yeah, without probably. really dragging it, <laughs> you know, with, with, I mean, without really letting the. Drag. Without letting the uh, the patients take over the asylum, yeah, that's, that's yeah. But without, without, sure. without spoiling <laughs> without spoiling anything, I think you mm-hmm. can say that we do kind of have ways written into the scenario that allow the game master to move things along, you know, uh, yeah. to, to accelerate yeah. the uh, pace of the night. Yeah, we so want to do a bad option, that done. so they can get that done in that four yeah. hour con slot. You know, as as going through that, I will definitely compliment that uh, with with Highway of Blood. Uh, Carnival of Madness, and, and even your, you know, your most recent offerings, you know, which we'll talk about in a moment. You guys, both of you, and at least in my opinion, as you know, as a as a GM or keeper, or whatever, you do provide a lot of advice. Uh, you know, which is extremely helpful, and I think it shows. Amen. It, re- I think it really shows both of your backgrounds. As you know, this is this is something that you didn't just pick up, you know, three years ago. It's been in your blood. Um, all this time. And then, you know, all these wonderful ideas are starting to come to the surface, but you also look at it from a game master's point of view. Um, and it's not sure. handholding. I mean, as you know, anyone listening here, this is not a, you know, neither one of these things are, they're not, they're not taking you by the hand, but there, there's a lot of excellent advice and also workable, personalized changes. Uh, you know, that is always a good thing within, you know, BRP and Call of Cthulhu. Yeah, your your ch- yeah. your chase rules in Highway of Blood are a lot more easier to understand <laughs> than the default <laughs> rules. To, to be perfectly honest, at, at least at least from from my point of view, and they do and they we, do and we went through we went through hell to 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 ch- cobble those together, man. That was that was I one of the harder imagine. parts. <laughs> yeah, of putting that uh, thing together. 
little known fact, I, uh, that was one of the things when we started working on Highway of Blood, neither one of us had ever used the chase rules. We hadn't even really understood the chase rules, you know. Um, as I bet you understand them now. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. I use them all the time now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So with your with your other series, right? Since uh, mm-hmm. I know we, it's Scott hinted at it, right? So your other series that you've recently released is the Grindhouse series, right? Mm-hmm. That 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 tends to be your your stylistic genre of uh, you know de facto genre you guys go to. Um, well, it, it, yeah, it's what we like, and and there seems to be sort of a a, a gap, I guess, absolutely in, in the in the in the Call of Cthulhu. Um, <clears throat> setting so mm-hmm. right so in 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 obviously that in an attempt to fill that gap what can you tell listeners about the series as a whole like what are you trying to accomplish with that series and what does the future look like for that series so what we're trying well, to do is we're trying to get rich uh, so we <laughs> yeah, want right. millions of people to buy every i got a whole separate that question on that <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's for a different that's for a different oh yeah I oh yeah we're, you can edit we're, that we're raking it or, in or you can keep it no. up. <laughs> um, he's he's funny um i'm sorry i'll, no, let, I'll it, let alex take it yeah <laughs> so no uh, it, um well I, I guess some of it is part of what i mentioned earlier which was the idea of being able to do one shots and uh part of it i guess on a on a on a sort of uh, behind the scenes level is, you know, it's, a, it's, it's hard to put out a, a full length scenario often for us, <laughs> you know, we don't have the resources to put them out as often as, as, you know, we might like. So this, this offers us the opportunity to take some of these ideas we have boiling around in our, in our, in our twisted minds and, and release them in, in a way that we can do them much more, much more frequently. Um, and also to get, uh, again, more one shots out there. And also, I guess, to, in a way to build our, 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 our 70s grindhouse cinematic universe, if you want to think of it like that, right? Um, because, uh, you know, uh, Howie of Madness, uh, sorry, Howie of Madness, Howie of Blood and Carnival of Madness would both make, they make great, you know, single scenarios. Um, but there's not much else out there for someone who wants to run, a say, a 70s campaign. So, uh, part of it was getting uh, getting other stuff out there too that people can use and eventually kind of build you know give them other options they can play in this this time period and, and with these kind of these kind of scenarios. Um, so yeah, I guess I guess it was just a great way to for us to try and get more uh, more of our ideas out there that we have because not all of them would, would make big, big massive scenarios. Sometimes you just sit there thinking it's like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you know. Um, if, if, if these, if these people stumbled upon, you know, this, this thing happening in, in, in this wooded cabin somewhere and, you know, and, and it's like, yeah, that'd be a great idea. Well, let's do that then. Mm, a cabin um, in the woods. Okay. Oh, Hey, that, that's a good name. They, they, <laughs> they do have a good, they do have a good cinematic flair. And I, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, Alex, you, you, a lot of things that you did maybe previously were, was focusing on cinematic environments, if I'm not mistaken, and so it, it seems like that, mm-hmm. and, and it shows, I mean, you, you provide soundtracks, you provide inspirations of, you know, recommendations, go watch these movies, go, go read this book or go look this thing up to kind of get mm-hmm. people into that, mm-hmm. that frame of mind and that, that cinematic mode, because it, it operates differently than it would in a normal Call of Cthulhu investigation process. It's a little bit more, yeah. it's, correct me if I'm wrong, it's a little bit more fast paced. Your scenarios oh, in the sure. in, in the in Usually, the grindhouse yeah. are more condensed, yeah. almost as if mm-hmm. to mirror that these these grindhouse movie you know situation or scenarios in the seventies where there would be you know come to the theater for for this whole Saturday and there's three things to three grindhouse movies to watch or go to the drive-in and they're back to back you know double features that kind of thing. Um, and so what, what is the average runtime for these? They're, they, they, are they coming in threes? There's three different scenarios in each volume so far. If I'm no, uh, two, two. It's, two. It's, okay. we're, 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 we're doing kind of like a double feature, right? Double feature. Right. So, okay. yeah. So, um, and each one, they're pretty short. I mean, what is it? Two hours, two hours, maybe 
mm-hmm. uh, two, two and a half hours. Play? Yeah, I, I would say three, three to four on my averages, but I usually okay. tend to let the I let the I let the players chew up on the role play early on in the game. Usually. Yeah, so yeah. Again, it, the, there's a little bit of variety. You know, but it, 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 it's a horror mm. movie thing, right? You get them to care about the characters, and then you destroy them. Yes. So, yeah. Um, oh, but they're, they're definitely one shot. So you know, for 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 yeah, a reasonable definitely. session, length. four hours or less. That that's the goal. Yeah. One yeah, thing I noticed on work you know con slots and stuff. Once you look at like you you have the introductory cover to the scenario, the the artwork, and you've done a what I consider to be a very thoughtful and also mindful thing that you've included with this is right there on the cover. There's a breakdown of what you of technically trigger warnings for people. This is what's going to happen in this scenario. There's three different big heavy things that or more that we're going to be touched upon. And right then and there, that's clear and easy for someone to just decide if this isn't for them. And mm-hmm. without having to create this situation where, you know, the, the keeper running the game is stuck, you know, and, you know, maybe I forgot to mention something or I forgot to bring this up or, you know, or it's or it's embedded within the game as sometimes it is. But right there, uh, you know, on these things or just, you know, for example, body horror needles or whatever the case may be and if anybody has any issues with that they know immediately or the keeper immediately knows a touch on that was Mm -hmm. that a conscious effort to do that uh as you know as a lot of these you know in this particular day and age there's a there's more concerns about touching base on that uh when when players get involved Mm -hmm. in in certain games and presenting it clearly uh up front that this is for you so was this a decision you guys decided to do because of that, or it's just one of those things you just said, well, I'm just going to plaster this here just because this is where we want to put it. I mean, it, like uh, we, we, we first started doing it with, with uh, highway of blood, because obviously there's, there's a lot of pretty sensitive stuff in that. Right. And, you know, while, while the, the, the scenarios themselves are grindhouse, you know, mm-hmm. I think both Ian and I are, are Ian and I are fairly progressive in right. <laughs> generally speaking. And so, you know, we, we did, de- we definitely wanted to, to people to, ha- to people to know what they're getting into. Right. right? So, so when they, when they pick it up, you know, you're not going to be running this for kids. You're not going to be running this for people who have PTSD or you know, you're not be running this for people who have, who have had genuine trauma in their lives. And you want right. to give them the opportunity to, to say, you know, I, I, I don't need to play. I don't need, I don't need to be playing that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so at the beginning of, at the beginning of highway, uh, beginning of highway and, and in the beginning of, of each one of these, mm-hmm. we do have a warning that, um, that basically lets people know, you know, what's in it, gives them tips for how to run it. If they, if they're going to run it mm-hmm. and then things that, you know, where how we do draw hard line. situations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and, and a lot of it should be common sense, but often isn't like, you know, good communication. Right. You know, you sit down with your players. Hey, you know, what? where are your boundaries? What do you want to, you know, is, is there anything you don't, absolutely don't want in this? Mm-hmm. And whenever possible, we try to give them options to eliminate those things so they can sort of do, you know, line item vetoes of, you know, okay, we definitely don't want this in there. <laughs> you know, right. this person has, has, has uh, tryptophobia. Oh, take this puppy Believe out. Believe it or not. Know. <laughs> like I said, I've run Carnival of Madness 13 times, mm-hmm. three separate times. I've had somebody with a clown phobia. Oh, really? In the game. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm to like, be fair, that's a, that, that, that seems to be a fairly common one these days. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is a lot more common than I thought. I was just kind of surprised. I'm like, you signed up to play Carnival of Madness, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> Maybe they didn't think there <laughs> All right, was I be won't, clowns at I the guess I, I guess I won't terrorize clowns. you. Why did it have to be clowns? Right. <laughs> Why is it got to be clowns? <laughs> but it, it, it's, definitely, it's definitely, I guess for lack of a better term, a little bit progressive, so to speak. I don't, I don't, I feel like that term doesn't get used properly a lot, but that it's, it's I think, yeah, um, a lot of, a lot of people have the warnings in the front of the book or it's embedded as you're, you know, flipping through several, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, uh, used to horror adventures or RPGs, if it's not up in the mm-hmm. front, it's somewhere within there. You're going to eventually touch base on something like, you know, Hey, this is a trigger warning, but with this, it's just, it's right there plain as day. And I do feel like, that would mm-hmm. make it make certain games more accessible to people if things are just kind of right there up in front, yeah, like that, which is See, great. Think- someone someone can look at this, go, you know, look at their five people. You know, does anyone have any of these issues before we continue? These are the three well, major. It's right there things. on the cover. I mean, yeah. the cover has yeah. two or three of those yeah. trigger warning words right so, on the cover. Yeah, and that's, so we, we're we're, we're kind of we're kind of talking about a couple of different things here. Yeah, agree. Um, yeah, but like regarding the you know 
progressive or not, whatever terminology right. you would use about, about content warnings in, the, in our material, right? Mm -hmm. um, anybody who's played or read or watched a play of Highway Blood knows why we needed to put content warnings right. in there, right? Yep. <laughs> it's, it's really, really adult stuff, really dark, really yeah. violent, really horrible. You know, yeah. like if, if I read that and that was my introduction to myself, I'd be like, man, Ian's a terrible person, right? So, <laughs> um, you know, but so I think content warnings, you know, for taking the politics out of the whole thing. Yeah. So um, I think that. they're, they're crucial. They're crucial if we want to produce horror, good horror content, what I call consider yeah. good horror content, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we could make everything PG-13, but we all know PG-13 horror is not good. No. If I want that. I'll watch Scooby Doo. I mean, come on, right. you know, we want to do we want to do rated R or actually in 1970 it probably would have been rated X. You know, yeah, type yeah. content. You know, um, that's that's just what we're into. You know, yeah, I, I, I would what much we, what rather we like to create. So, regarding the other part, which I think, um, which is what you were actually asking about, is the the what I call the splash covers within yes. Grindhouse. Mm -hmm. So each each scenario has its own kind of splash cover that you could use as like a cover image, you know, or whatever. And that has the three things in it, right? For example, yeah. uh, blood, gore, graphic violence, or yeah. you know, tripophobia, yeah, needles, violence you know, against children, part. incest, mm -hmm. whatever that kind of stuff. You know, um, so I, I, I'm going to kind of redirect the question back to you, Alex, because you're the mm -hmm. art designer, um, mm -hmm. like. Like when when you first came up with the first splash covers, right for Crimson King mm -hmm. and uh, Isle of the Damned, um, what was it that that made you? Uh, were you just experimenting? What, what, why did you decide to to put those like three three kind of quick uh, content warning words on the, on each one? Mm -hmm. Well, part I mean part of it was just vis visually it balanced it like to have mm -hmm. to have you have the title of it at the top, and I, and I just I love I love splash pages like that at the beginning yeah. of of things you know chapters mm -hmm. and and uh mm -hmm. you know whatever it happens to be but uh in this case because they're different scenarios i, I felt that was even more important so you have the the, mm -hmm. the 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 big image and then you've got the name and then i want something to kind of balance it at the bottom and i was trying to think of what to put down there and then i think well because i mean we have the general warning at the beginning you know for grindhouse in general but um each scenario is going to be so different that you know you're going to have entirely different situations mm -hmm. in each one one you could have massive body horror and the next one might just be a ghost story where where there's psychological tension and and you know that kind of thing going on so they can be very different and so i thought the idea of having these warnings and i just picked three just because it, it 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 looked nice mm -hmm. <laughs> um well, I, uh, let me if i may if i can inter sure. interject on that i mean a yes, it looks it looks nice, like it it balances those splash covers out nicely. But I think the secondary effect is it it, it is going to that um, what what Scott was talking about is providing those warnings up front for folks, like right. hey, these are the these are themes that are going to be in this <clears throat> short scenario, and yeah. so a keeper can quickly flip through and go, oh. No, I know I've got, you know, Billy Bob playing in this scenario and he doesn't do needles or body horror. Right. So I'm going to just we're not going to we're not going to do this one or I've got to modify it. Right. right. You know, it, it right. lets people make informed decisions. Sure. Zero uh, exactly. Yeah. Much more uh, much easier. Well, which and, I, and which I think the fantastic, so thank you for, for yeah. doing that. Yeah. Putting on the splash page makes sense because number one it's you're going to spot it right away. Yes. And number two, um, like, like I was saying, each scenario is, is each scenario is going to can be, can be very different from each other. And so you're going to, have, you know, you're going to be dealing with different stuff all the time. So, you know, it's either change the, it's either change that whole page at the front or just change three words. And that, and just from a, just from a design standpoint, it's just easier for me in a way. So there's that, that, that aspect to it as well. It, uh, I mean, right. from, I'm not a graphic guy. I'm an editor, right? <laughs> um, but from somebody who reads a lot, writes a lot of reviews, uh, and, and runs a lot of games and plays a lot of games, I, I appreciate those things like right up front, uh, not on the not on the main cover, uh, just because I, I don't know where they fit in the book on the main cover, unless the entire book is that. But especially with a with a smaller booklet of two scenarios, I can go to each individual scenario and know what's there. And I think and I think, 
you know, people that are going to be buying this, uh, you know, buying into this product line down the road are going to appreciate that. Hope so. Um, Hope so. Yeah. It also reminds me, you know, going back to our kind of cinematic um, themes, right? Which is what I think critical hit publishing does, in my opinion. Like if anybody asks me, you know, what adjective would you use to describe what critical hit publishing does? I'd use the word cinematic, right? Because that's kind of what we, what we, what we focus on is making Touché. it make it exciting, make it feel like something you'd sit down and watch in a major feature or something, you know. Um, but you remember, like, they used to do that with the rating system, too. Like, if something was rated R, it would say rated R for, you know, adult language, sexual content, <clears throat> right. and graphic Smoking, violence. Or right, gore, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, the, all the different stuff would get listed next I'm not to sure R, when right? smoking so, became a rated R I, thing, but it is. <laughs> so I didn't know if that was kind of an inspiration or Drug not, use. but that's something that I always think of when I look at the splash pages and you see, yeah. you know, trypophobia, <clears throat> um, you know, violence and and uh nightmares or whatever you know i'm just right. using random ones that we have in different scenarios but yep. you know that that's what i think of i think of those old rated r for these right reasons. on it, one, one thing we didn't mention that uh, we are doing a little bit differently with this as well is we're experimenting with the uh the size the size of the of the book um <clears throat> we decided to go with a six by nine format for these grindhouse ones um, now, if you're getting the PDF, then then it doesn't make that much of a difference, right? But as as soon as we get as soon as we sell enough, you have to you have to reach Electrum status on uh, Drive Through RPG. You can do print on demand, which is what we're planning on doing. And uh, we thought we'd try just a just you know maybe a small sort of you know a small format. Number one, that sort of uh, it, may, it makes you sort of think of of sort of these little pulpy. Um, you know, books that you might pick up in a five and dime store kind of thing. It has that, it just has a little, I don't know, something about more of a grindhouse feel to me anyway. Um, and the other thing was that because these are going to be shorter, um, putting them in on a six by nine format allows us to have more pages because there's a, there's a page limit when you go to print on demand, you have to have at least, I think it's 18 pages. I want to say you can't have less than that. And we weren't sure how That's many right. how many pages we're going to have per scenario. So we were like, uh, you know, we want to we want to, we didn't want to just pad it out, you know, for no good reason. But by but by making the smaller format, it allows us to you know to do the two scenarios and have enough, but yet have enough pages where we can actually do print on demand because a lot of people do like the physical copy. I mean, I like them too. So mm-hmm. um, you know, I want to. I'm a dead tree kind of guy. Get that. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Yeah. What's that? I'm a dead tree kind of guy. I like oh, my print yeah. books. When, whenever <laughs> possible, I like print books. Yeah, I, I grabbed all your PDFs, but no, there'll be a message going. So when's the POD coming out? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Under so, an assumed name now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got several accounts that I use. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I think my my last question um, as we start to kind of wrap this up is I think this is going to be geared more towards Ian. Uh, cause I, Ian, you seem to be the, the public face, uh, for like convention gaming and things like that. Uh, it's just because I have a more reliable internet connection. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, to be fair, I, I, I have wrong? played games with Alex, uh, when I was part of the play test group for carnival of madness, Alex ran it. We didn't have any problems with his internet. I'm just saying, but, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I know, but I know you had the alpaca that day. So that's, that's what happened. Oh, <laughs> uh, the moose was on vacation. Got it. Um, but I know Ian, that you typically kind of personify the critical hit publishing, right? You're out there. You're the face of, of, of you guys uh, when it comes to convention gaming and things like that. So where can listeners like find uh, you guys, either of you, or just you, Ian, uh, running, you know, the uh, the grindhouse scenarios, or maybe Carnival of Ma- uh, Madness, you know, over the next, you know, coming month or so. Well, I have two games. I'm doing the the Volume One double feature, so uh, the Crimson King and Isle of the Damned for Grog Meatish, which is coming up 13th, 14th, I think, in November, somewhere around there. Um, Isle of the Damned is sold out, but there are less. I looked yesterday anyway, there were still three seats available for the Crimson King at Grog Meadish. And I want to say it's November 13th. It might be the 14th. I'm, I'm in Europe and, you know, so times get mixed up in days. But, uh, <laughs> you can definitely, they're, they're, they're there on the, um, <clears throat> on the, the game sign up for the, uh, that would be 13, 14 November. Yeah. And that's the only convention games that I still have lined up for the year at the moment. Um, 
aside from that, I do a lot of um, play testing on various servers on Discord. I, I've been kind of trying to spread it out a little bit, trying out different locations. The good friends of Jackson Elias Discord server is excellent. Anytime I throw a game up there, it's usually full within hours. Um, you know, so um, I do put a lot of stuff up there. Um, there's another one called. If you want, if you want to see any played, if, if, if you want to see live Sorry. play, uh, Ian, Ian has a couple on his channel on uh, Fantastic Dimensions, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but also uh, Into the Darkness has done our has done our stuff. Uh, there, yeah. there's, there's even a uh, Carnival of Madness that Ian ran uh, yeah, very recently. The second part of which now. should be coming out soon. Yep, it's uh, out. Part two, part two is out uh, yesterday. Yeah. In fact, I think. Yeah. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. It's already done. Shit. Yep, it's already out. I. I, I was aware. Mm -hmm. I was made aware. Yeah, they, of it. They've, they've done the, the pipeline. They've done How We Have Blood and, and now mm -hmm. Carnival of Madness. So the three big ones are are all on Into the Darkness. So, yeah. it, um, there. Uh, which ones did you run? You ran. I know you ran Carnival of Madness. Obviously, did you run any of the others, Ian? I'm trying to remember. I ran. All oh, three you ran, ran the yeah. pipeline. Yep. I ran all three. I ran the pipeline, Highway of Blood, and okay. Uh, yeah. So Madness, so okay. yeah. In, if you go to Into Into, in, and then Tom yeah. Tom also Tom also <laughs> ran pipeline. Yeah, and did he do a Highway of Blood as well? No, I don't think so. I don't remember. But yeah, it, it, the it, their production value is really good. So it's it's you know, yeah. They, if you, you want to watch a live play of it, uh, of any of them, that's uh, that's a good place to go. Excellent. Although we'll definitely... actually, mm -hmm. I, I would interject and say if you want to see my personal favorite Highway of Blood playthrough is the one on um, Mini Terrain Domain that Alex. Oh, ran. that that was a fun uh, one. For how, for, that's the quintessential of highway of blood that's my favorite. scenario. Yeah, for that's a playthrough. We will and definitely had another one. Of, <clears throat> Go ahead. Sorry. I had another one of those. Oh man, I wish we came up with that kind of moments <laughs> in it as well. Prior, in, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll we'll definitely MP, definitely put the, uh, links. I should say. We'll definitely put links to those in in the show notes, directing everybody there. So yes, and and I, I I've watched. I would do watch Fantastic Dimensions. Uh, you know, um, quite a bit off and on. And it's a, you know, it's a, all of your games that, that I've seen on there, at least maybe not watch through, to, through completion, wow. but, but, but seen, seen them all I pop in and, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the, one of the ones that one of the few that I can watch, I mean, I'm not a watcher. Right. I, I can listen to people gaming, yeah. but uh, it's one of the few that I actually can put up and, and sit down and just watch. So, mm. so there's, wow. there's, there's that. Uh, but um, so we'll definitely include those in the show notes. Um, as, oh, sorry. Aside from that, what else? Sorry, we'll cut this out. Um, <laughs> what's next for you guys? Is do you guys have anything in in up and coming, or are you just focusing on this, or can you not Ooh, talk you about it? Funny you should ask. Actually, no. Um, well, we're also both into science fiction, and so um, oh, Keith, cut it. Oh Christ! <laughs> hey guys, it it's out. been nice. It's been nice talking with you. Uh, we're out. Uh, no, computer. go ahead. Carry on. Carry on. <laughs> Keith hates sci-fi. I forget about Keith that. Keith hates sci-fi. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I carry on. No. Oh, go ahead. I'm joking. Yeah. No. Uh, so we're uh, yeah we're, we're we're both we're both into into sci we're both some ideas for sci-fi scenarios I should say. And so we're going to be doing a, a similar format to the to the to the Grindhouse double feature, uh, but it's going to be uh, they're going to be sci-fi. Um, uh, the basically the the working title uh, at the moment is uh, the the, uh, the the trackless void, um, and uh, it'll have again two scenarios, same same kind of format as as uh, grind as the Grindhouse. Uh, it'll obviously look different, but. Uh, you know, it, it, they'll again. They'll be designed to be one shots. Uh, same oh. idea. <clears throat> Very cool. And then starting start. Uh, actually, it should be uh, by the time this airs, we'll be having our uh, Halloween sale. Uh, that's going to include uh, Highway of Blood and Carnival of Madness uh, in a package mm -hmm. deal on Drive Through RPG for only thirteen dollars. That's only six dollars and fifty cents a piece for the PDFs. Um, so it's that's going to be available. Pages of material. Yeah, <laughs> highly recommend and, it. It's a fantastic hours deal. and hours, <laughs> hours and hours of gameplay. Oh, ooh, absolutely! Oodles, oodles and oodles. Yeah. And they, they, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the the general conceit is is they're they're almost a continuation of each other. It's, it's a it's a 
some of them are a chain of events that that are interconnected at certain points. There, there, are, there are some connect. Yeah, there are potential connections. Yes. Yeah. Um, yep. And you can, you, but you can sure. connect them as much as you want, much, much like, yep. much like I did when, when I, when I ran through the, the uh, Carnival of Blood <laughs> session and I threw my character as a, uh, as a little Easter egg when I was running a highway of blood in there. And, you know, I, I believe I got a chuckle from, from Ian or, or Alex regarding that. And, you know, Keith's like, who? Like, Shut up. Never mind. This is for me. So, all right. Well, th- this is, this is excellent. I mean, I, I, I hope you guys, we didn't take up too much of your time and I hope we, did we cover any, did we not cover anything that you guys wanted to mention? The big thing we wanted to touch on is what you guys have. Uh, where they can find find your uh, your work, and uh, more, more importantly, of course, the sale coming up this this week. Uh, definitely pick up pick up these yeah. games, run them for Halloween. Um, I mean, even e- I mean, even if it, Highway of Blood can be can be done in pieces, and you can have a nice little you know uh, the hills have eyes scenario Halloween evening. Uh, it doesn't you don't have to definitely <laughs> tackle it as a sandbox, but you can have bits and pieces. Yeah. My personal favorite I'm looking forward to run is uh, one of the, I believe it's in volume two of the grindhouse. Is it Jackknife? The, the one with the big mm, yeah. truck. Uh, that, that one, I just, as soon as I read that instantly, um, you know, visions of me watching the, uh, the hitcher uh, on HBO as a kid, making sure my parents <laughs> don't, don't catch me watching that, that infamous scene that I actually yep. threw into once again, my version of a, uh, of highway of blood and i i won't you mm-hmm. know touch on that but yes so mm. uh but anything else that uh, you guys would like to cover that we haven't uh, covered ourselves and then we'll get to the most important question we have uh, i think i think it's almost it uh, although carnival of madness is a great one for halloween because it it literally takes place on on the on october 30th so um yep. you know it, it's 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 perfect for that which is why we wanted the to release it in time for for Halloween, of course. Yes, um, mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad you guys but, were able uh, to make uh, make that happen. Yeah, and sure. Thanks in large part to Keith <laughs> there for stepping up when when we needed a uh, an emergency uh, <laughs> an emergency editor to to help 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 us out. Yeah. So um, you're welcome. Uh, and guys. any 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 further errors can be uh, can be uh, directed to him as his fault. <laughs> okay. And I would just say <laughs> yes. I would I would only add that. Um, <laughs> With regards to the grindhouse double features, like mm-hmm. we're going to keep on cranking those out as as much yeah. as we can, as long as we're inspired to keep writing them, and mm-hmm. as long as people seem to be interested in, and actually purchasing and running them and playing <laughs> them and stuff, yeah. uh, we'll keep you going with that. I mean, we've already we're, we're well into the third volume now in in our uh, in our development phase, and mm-hmm. uh, yep, we're, we are playing a Christmas on. special of of those too. Uh, a, a double feature Christmas, a Christmas special. special. Well, you heard it Volume here, listeners. Special. Ooh. And I've already. <laughs> now I'm I've really got, excited. We've already got the framework down for at least one of the scenarios for Volume Five as well. So I mean, we're. Yeah. The the, the only thing I like more than Halloween it. horror is Christmas horror. Christmas Amen. horror. <laughs> See, Christmas for is, for is existential horror for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you guys keep keep releasing them, I'll keep <clears> buying them. So you know, absolutely, I love them. So we're, we're going to put all this information in the show notes, but, but definitely, definitely check these guys out on drive through uh, highway. I mean, you can, if, you know, critical hit publishing highway of blood, carnival of madness, um, you know, you can easily search these things out. If, you know, if, if, you know, if you don't go into the show notes, like some people do, but, but definitely check these out. These are, you know, these scenarios are made for this time of the year, you know, bring some horror into your home and have a good time with these. You'll know how to run these. these you'll, you'll be, have a wonderful, horrific treat with these things. Um, but so we have one more question for you guys, and this is probably the most important thing that we have when we're dealing with interviews and titterbigs. And by the way, you are our first interview. So, so a little, little round of applause for that. I'll add some in, in, in the edit. It'll, it'll be, you know, <laughs> Put it in post. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so here we go. So the most important question we have is, which titter pig is your favorite? Oh, Keith, by far. Ian, With, without question. Ian, what? buddy, buddy, Ian. Also, <laughs> perfect. So, so what? What I'll what I'll add in there is it's just like. Scott in a I mean, robotic voice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I love I love I love you, Scott. I love you, Scott. But Keith, Carnival of Madness wouldn't have been out for Halloween. If yeah, he 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 he, 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 he that 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 pig pulled our bacon out of the fire. So 
He, so what uh, you're saying yeah, is, is he, not he, only do I need to, he ha- need to edit he has it out. at the moment. What you're saying <laughs> is, not only in, you, you, <laughs> at the moment, yeah, I just, I just need to edit this but out. You and know, then I need to hack the servers. And now change. we're not saying we can't be bought though. So if if if, if you want to, you know, oh, uh, you after know, I hear the final us, version of this podcast, depending on 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 how the editing works out, I mean, <laughs> I could be swayed. I could be swayed. Oh. <laughs> Yes, so it, 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 I'll do. I'll change the introduction. It says, yeah, here, here's, here's Alex, and and then we'll we'll have horns blaring and Ian. Um, I, I know how to get to you, uh, but uh, oh, no. So that's that's fine. But you both suffer a horrible, horrible, tragic death for picking Keith. But uh, you know, say it all be. Um, so so with that, um, Keith, how about you? Uh, if you want to guide us on our way out of here and then we'll, right. we'll, we'll cut these two loose cool cool all right well alex ian thanks for uh being our first uh guinea pigs on titter pigs for our, <laughs> uh, our our inaugural interview we we greatly appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us um this evening no yes and uh we wish you continued success on your product lines uh, i know we are all fans of them so i hope listeners can come away uh from this interview with an appreciation and a new interest in, in your product lines for, for call of Cthulhu and maybe even your alluded to sci-fi line, even though I don't like sci-fi. Uh, <laughs> but that being said, uh, again, thank you for your time. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, listeners check out the show notes uh, for any of the uh, links to their products over a drive through and definitely and best, best definitely way to get a hold of you guys. This. Twitter, Facebook. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Keith. But I just uh, throw uh, it out probably here. Facebook. We have we, uh, Critical Head Publishing has a uh, a Facebook page, um, and uh, yeah, I mean that's that's I, if I, if you want if you want to keep up on what we're doing, that's probably the best place to go. Um, but we also we're also fairly responsive on on Drive Through RPG. If you uh, you know if you if, yep. you if you have any questions about a product or you know comments or whatever, uh, you know and and just don't forget you can do it right in the. Uh, yeah, they give you a place to do that. Tab, yeah. And I, I, oh, one thing I want to add real quick is if, if anyone if anyone buys anything, um, it really does help if you leave you know a star rating and and a, and, and, so, and and even better is a uh, a, a small review. Uh, it, it helps to sort of get us you know more notice. Um, I always tell so. people I say if you like it, rate it, and if you hate it, write a review. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you've heard it here on Titter Pigs. <laughs> Yeah. You like it, rate it. If you hate it, write a review. Wait, I'm a reviewer too. Wait a minute. <laughs> what does that say about me? I don't, I don't know. Um, but it works for the grindhouse aesthetic anyway to get an occasional scathing review, you know? So, hey, fair enough. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. So, again, thank you uh, on behalf of Scott and I. Thank you for your time. And we will, we will game with you and chat with you guys again soon, I'm sure. Cool. Thank you. Take care, everybody. 